So now that we've uh, computed the utility maximizing um, demand for services, or consumption of services by household, we'll, we um, will be able to compute uh, the aggregate demand curve in the model. And um, the aggregate demand curve is going to be one of the key uh, curves that we use to solve our model. Um, so what's the aggregate demand curve? So it's something that, you know, when you study intermediate macro uh, and you study ISLM, there's always an aggregate demand curve in there. But um, the truth is that in most modern business cycle model, uh, you don't really have an aggregate demand curve. Um, Usually you'll have an Euler equation that tells you how people um, smooth consumption over time, but then in steady state, this thing uh, vanishes actually. Um, so the aggregate demand is degenerate in uh, modern macro models, um, at least you know in steady state. Um, so you, you know you can really only look at aggregate demand as a dynamic phenomenon, um, whereas. Uh, and that has actually important implications for how the models behave. Whereas in our model of Slack here, uh, which is static, we'll have a proper aggregate demand uh, curves that uh, will determine the properties of the model. So let's define the aggregate demand here. So the aggregate demand is just uh, the amount of services that uh, all the, that the households purchase so as to uh, maximize So as to maximize their utility. So each household is going to decide an amount of services to purchase to maximize their utility. And then once we aggregate all these services that are purchased, uh, we're going to get the aggregate demand. Of course, here, uh, all the households are the same. So we can use a representative agent approach and therefore the demand uh, for services by one household is also going to be the aggregate demand. Um, so uh, it's the amount of services that households purchase so as to maximize their utility given when they do the computation, given the price of services, P, and the market tightness. Uh, X. So we can see uh, Basically, the aggregate demand is going to be a function uh, of the price of services and tightness that gives us an amount of services uh, that's going to be demanded by households. Uh, and in terms of notation, we're going to denote it the aggregate demand as Y because uh, you know it's an output of services. D because it's demanded, uh, and that takes as argument X, the market tightness, and P, uh, the price of services. So how do we compute this aggregate demand? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, so you, the, the basis of this is that is a behavior of household who want to maximize their utility, right? And we know that the amount of consumption of services that maximizes utility, we computed that uh, earlier, we said that uh, uh, to max utility, household, a household is going to consume. So we said that C, the amount of consumption was <coughs> uh, depended on X, on the key. The utility function parameter one plus tau x, where tau x is a matching wage to the power of epsilon, the elasticity of substitution between services and real money balances times m over p, m nominal money balances, p price level, so m over p is just um, the real money balances. 
So this is what the household um, consumes, right? So how much uh, does the household purchase, which is what we are interested in. So to uh, maximize utility, the household purchases. So how much you purchase? Well, you know that to consume one service, you have to purchase one plus tau x due to the matching uh, cost. So the household purchase c times one plus tau x. Uh, and so that means, so that gives us that the household is going to purchase y uh, how, uh, is equal to, so we can keep key, one plus, uh, so we'll have key to the power of epsilon that comes from this first term. Then we will have uh, one plus tau x in the denominator. And one plus tau x in the denominator. is going to be to the power of epsilon minus one, uh, because uh, let's just uh, minus one because we've multiplied uh, c by one plus tau x times m over p real money balances. Okay, uh, so that's how much the household is going to purchase, um, given tightness, given the price level, and uh, if their uh, nominal money balances are M. Now, a key thing in the aggregate uh, it, uh, that's going to happen is that M, the nominal money balances held by each household is just equal to mu, the endowment of uh, nominal money balances. Why is that true? Uh, well, we can look at uh, the uh, budget constraint of the household, of all households. So what you can do is aggregate the budget constraint of all household, and that tells you that all expenditure is going to be equal to all income from the households. Um, but of course, here all the households are the same, so we can just reuse our individual budget constraint. But here we are really thinking about aggregating all of this. Um, so what are the expenditure? Well, we know that it's uh, M, the amount of money that's held, plus uh, P, the price of services, one plus tau x times C, these are services, uh, these are services that are purchased and that's equal to all income, which is the end amount of money in the aggregate plus P, F of x times K. Um, so F of x times K, total amount of services that are sold uh, times P. Okay. Uh, so this is what we have. But the, the key thing is that, you know, in this matching market, any service that's sold, you know, through the matching function is a service that's uh, purchased. You know, it has to be through the matching function that the number of services that are sold is equal to the number of services that are purchased. You know, this is always true. Um, so, you know, in Valrazen model, we have to assume supply is equal to demand. Uh, that's, uh, you know, supply is equal to demand. It's a, it's an, it's an equilibrium condition. When that's true, we know that we can equalize supply and demand. But here, it's not like that. Here, it's you know just due to the amount how transactions are realized, the amount of services that are sold is always equal to the number of services that are uh, that are purchased. So uh, through that's through matching. Number of services sold equal number of services purchased. That's just an identity. Uh, so what the number of services, and you know, and both of these things are equal to uh, the number of trades given by the matching function. Both of these things are just the number of trades 
given by matching function. Okay, so um, the number of services that are sold. Uh, well, you know that it's just f of x, the selling probability, times k, the number of services that are for sale. And notice that f of x times k, uh, given the definition of f of x, that's just, uh, you know, it's just a matching function. Uh, evaluated at k, the number of services for sale, uh, and um, v, uh, the number of visits. Because, uh, you know, that's just what happened in the aggregate. And, you know, that's how we, did, we computed anyway the selling probability as a matching function divided by the number of services um, that are for sale. Uh, that's what we have. Now the number of services... Purchased. Well, um, that we know is like V, it's um, Q of X, probability that a visit is successful, time number of visit. And this is also matching function at K and V. Okay. Uh, so we, we know that these two things are just, uh, are just the same to the matching process. And here's the number of services purchased, it's Q of X times V, but we know that. Um, the number of services uh, purchased is also equal to C, the number of services consumed, times 1 plus tau x. Uh, and that, we know it because that's how we computed tau x. We said, okay, we know that consumption would be less than um, uh, expenditure because household have to spend services on matching. So we're going to compute that tau x to know exactly for each amount of consumption, for each unit of consumption, how much we need to purchase. And so uh, C times 1 plus tau x, uh, it's just also equal to Y, the total amount of services that are purchased, and it's equal to Q of x times V. Uh, and this is, uh, this we should say, this is just by definition of tau of x. And you can see how we co computed tau of x. When we computed tau of x, we imposed that c times 1 plus tau of x was equal to q of x times v. Um, this comes from the uh, from the definition of um, tau of x. So now, uh, so what do we take away from this? Well, the key things that, uh, you know, we, we want to take away is that, therefore, what is always true is that f of x times k is equal to 1 plus tau of x. That is just always true uh, on the matching market. 1 plus tau of x times c. And so if we, if we plug that into the, uh, if we plug that into our budget, aggregate budget constraint, What result do we get? Well, we can go up to the budget constraint and what we've showed is that this term here, one plus tau of x times c is just the same as this term here, f of x times k. And both of them are multiplied by p. So these terms here and this term here are just exactly the same. And therefore what we learn from this is that necessarily just through the budget constraint, uh, it has to be that in the model, um, once households have decided how much they want to consume and they've made their purchases, it's always true that, of course, the amount of money that they hold, uh, M is equal to mu, the endowment of money, of course. M is equal to mu in the model, uh, necessarily just through the budget constraint. Uh, you know, and that's just because uh, an income for somebody is an expenditure for somebody else. So all these things are going to net out once we aggregate the budget constraint, and then it has to be that the money that people 
hold at the end, once we aggregate it, it's just the initial endowment of money. Um, but so once we do that, and once we plug that, we can uh, plug that into um, the first order condition from the household's problem. So here, you know, you see that you have an M here. And so what we can do is get rid of that M because we know that when in the model M will just be equal to mu. So once we do that, so combining essentially the first order condition from the household problem with, you know, the aggregate budget constraint, which imposes that uh, the amount of money held is just the end amount of money. What do we get? What we get that output or number of services that household want in the aggregate that household want to purchase is just equal to uh, key epsilon <coughs> divided by 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 times mu over p. Okay. Uh, and so you see this gives us uh, this y that we have here. This is a uh, number of services purchased, so basically demanded by households given price and uh, tightness. So this is just, um, basically, this is just going to be our aggregate uh, demand curve. So I can put a little, uh, so this relation that comes from uh, the first order condition and budget constraint, uh, this relation between output and price and tightness, that's what we'll call uh, the aggregate demand curve. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to tag this uh, and put it a little. So I'm going to call this here. So this is going to be our aggregate demand. So I'll call it Y because it's an output D because it's demanded as a function of X and P. So that's our aggregate demand curve. Uh, so YD is the aggregate demand curve here. The, or AD curve, aggregate demand curve. Okay, um, and so you know in this static model, it's it's uh, pretty and simple. You get this uh, this curve as a function of price and tightness. And so what's unusual uh, compared to, say, the aggregate demand curve you get in an ISLM model um, is that here the tightness also shows up in the aggregate demand curve.